Representative Vern Buchanan of Florida said our plan was reckless. Guess how much he got in that program? Forgiven. $2,300,000. This is not a joke. Can't make this stuff up. President Biden last year taking on critics of his student debt forgiveness plan by highlighting Republicans who were happy to accept government cash during the pandemic. Very happy. And that brings us to a new book entitled Poverty by America, which highlights how the wealthiest Americans receive almost 30 percent more in government subsidies than the poorest families. Joining us now, the book's author, Matthew Desmond. He's a sociologist at Princeton and director of its eviction lab, researching the nation's housing crisis. And it's great to have you. Uh, talk a little bit more about the, the wealthier Americans still benefiting from sometimes the very policies they complain about. That's right. The government spends a lot more money subsidizing affluence than alleviating poverty. If you count things like tax breaks and social insurance, the richest among us get a lot more help from the government than the poorest among us. So, Matthew, this is such an extraordinary book on so many different levels, particularly in this moment. I mean, talk about the way in which poverty is produced in the United States and sustained. I mean, there's a sense in which you offer us this, this stick description, historical description, yeah. and you offer us remedy. Give us a sense yeah. of the historical account of why poverty persists in the United States. This is clearly a choice our country has made, right? We tolerate exploitation in the labor market and the housing market. We tolerate a welfare state that's imbalanced, right, that gives most to have the people that have it a lot already. And then we continue to be segregationist, right? Drawing walls around ourselves and hoarding opportunity. We need to tear down those walls. What's at the root of all of that, though? I mean, is that, I mean, how do we talk about the roots of that? Yeah, I think racism is certainly a root of that. The kind of capitalism we've accepted in this country is not a capitalism many of us deserve. And the book is really a push for a different kind of nation, a capitalism that serves the people, not the other way around. So. I always talk about this across the country. There's a sense in which there is a kind of background condition of scarcity. Yeah. Right? There's only so much pie to go around. Yeah. And if we think we're going to remedy poverty, that means I got to lose something. Yeah. How do we talk about poverty abolition when we think there's only so much pie to go around? I think we have to push back against that scarcity. Professor to professor, one quick stat. Yeah. You know, there's a study that showed that if the richest Americans just pay the taxes they owed, not paid more taxes, just stopped evading taxes, we as a nation could raise an additional $175 billion a year. That's almost enough to bring everyone out of poverty. We can do this. So, Matthew, you write in your chapter entitled How We Buy Opportunity that, quote, it cannot both be true that excluding poor people from high opportunity communities enriches the lives of the people inside the wall while degrading the lives of the people outside of it. And that tearing down the wall and welcoming the poor into those communities will come at no cost to the current residents. Affluence allowed those residents to climb over the wall, and the wall protected and grew their affluence. As the sociologist, Tressie McMillan Cotton, has put it, families that can, that can hoard do, and neighborhoods in which they live benefit. Let's be honest, sharing opportunities previously hoarded doesn't mean everyone wins. It means that those who have benefited from the nation's excesses will have to take less so that others may share in the bounty. And why is this so hard, especially in our policies um, that often, you know, the, when Republicans are in power, they, they don't even push the, the policies they complain about? I think many of us are open to this bargain. I think many of us don't want to be complicit in all this poverty around us. It diminishes all of us. And I think that some of us who are secure and privileged will have to take a little less for us to abolish poverty in America. But we get something better. We get a safer neighbor, nation, a happier nation, a freer nation. I think a nation without poverty is a nation that has a different, more lush kind of prosperity. The new book is Poverty by America. Matthew Desmond, thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. We appreciate it.